This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back. This video is all on soil and pedology, and in particular, we're looking at soil formation, how this amazing medium of both biotic and abiotic components, including all the spheres, forms on our surface of this planet, which benefits all life, vegetation, and of course, humans. So this video is in the soil playlist and also part of the AP environmental science playlist, and let's check out how soil forms. What is soil? So soil is an extremely thin layer of naturally occurring material that is a mixture of both mineral particles, air, water, pore space, and organic material, leaf litter, and organisms and animals. And it's dynamic, it's influenced by various factors which we'll get into in this video. It's a very open uh, system, so energy and matter is flowing in and out of this, this layer. It is to do with uh, pedogenesis, which is the development of soil. And it's looking at basically the five spheres and how they interact, so the cryosphere, um, anthroposphere, which is the humans, the biosphere, hydrosphere, geosphere, and atmosphere. So all the spheres are involved in soil and soil production, how soil is maintained, and this is critical in our ecosystems and biomes. So this video is going to focus on how soil is developed, how it is produced and formed. And there are four main methods of formation. There is addition, there is loss, there is transformation, and there is leaching. So these four main methods and agents are going to create the soil, but the soil can be dictated by different factors, different controlling factors that are shown right here, which is climate, organisms, relief, or topography, paramaterial, and time. And we're going to go through each one in detail how climate affects soil formation. Now, climate is defined as the consistent weather patterns over an average of 30 year period. So weather is daily and climate is long term, is more chronic. So the climate is established by both the temperature, the latitude, the elevation, the proximity to oceans versus landlocked in the middle of uh, continentality and the wind direction, wind speed, and obviously the precip, so low and high pressure and these various pressure belts and if we can get rain sleet snow ice and how much of it and how consistent and also that's based on temperature so the higher the temperature generally the more evaporation the less water will be in the soil which would increase various constituents like the lime the CaCO3 would increase and the pH would also increase if you have a higher precip then you're going to balance this concentration of acidity uh, between the base and the alkali and then obviously more moisture more rain more precip is going to promote more plant growth because the water in the soil is advantageous for carrying nutrients for percolation for aeration and to stimulate plant growth and biomass so there's the balance of evaporation versus precip the balance of elevation and in terms of tectonics over long periods of time and how this can adjust and the climate is very cl closely linked to the other parts or the other factors that control soil formation like the time like the relief and obviously like the organic material how parent material controls soil formation so when we talk about soil, soil sits on and is partly composed of mineral particles, which comes from rock. So we've got to discuss the bedrock or what's called the parent material, where the rock came from. So the parent would be that igneous sedimentary or metamorphic rock that is the layer right below the soil, which the soil is formed from initially. So this is closely linked to climate and how weathering is going to break down that rock uh, through various agents and time and generate small smaller particles of rock which the soil can start to form around and form a base. So the underlying exposed bedrock is very important to discuss. Now there's two ways to build uh, this parent material through weathering is the residual in place in situ weathering of the rock or you can have the transported rock or material, rocky material, minerals to a location through various agents and various methods. 
for, for example, gravity, which is like rock landslides, rock falls, or talus, it's going to be colloquial. Uh, water can bring in material that's called alluvial through rivers and streams, and marine through uh, estuaries and, and oceans, and lacustrine, which is going to be through lakes. And ice can bring in material through glaciers and erratics and deposition from glaciers and terminal moraines. And wind can also bring in material that's probably obviously smaller uh, in mass, that's uh, aeolian or aeolian transportation. And this can bring in material, which is called loose, by the way, and this can bring in material that can start to form the basis for our soil. And different rocks, different materials, different particles have different rates of weathering, different levels of resistance. So it depends on what kind of bedrock you have, which will depend how fast the soil forms and obviously how quickly the particles are broken down to stimulate the growth of soil. How organisms control soil formation. So organisms can be broken into two sections the pure animals, in terms of burrowing animals, worms, insects, bugs, and how they're going to disturb and reorganize the soil based on their habitats, based on their movement through the soil, and based on their day-to-day -day activities. Then you have the plants and the vegetation and the algae and the bacteria and, and the fungi. You have this breakdown of organic material through decomposition of whatever is on the surface vegetation, the biome, the different ecosystem. And you have the plant litter and the leaf litter and the trees that are going to decompose within the soil as a form of recycling. And the nutrients are recycled, the carbon is a store in the soil and into the rocks eventually. But you have the breakdown and decom decomposition of this material, organic material, that's going to turn into humus. Now humus is uh, partly decomposed or finely decomposed organic material in the soil which can be leached down and to help stimulate the growth of soil at different horizons and different depths in terms of the B and the C horizon and the E horizon. So this biomass, this plant growth is going to cause a lot of decomposition and create and add, in terms of addition, a lot of organic material into the soil which will benefit the development of the soil into a full mature multi-horizon soil profile. So the humus is going to turn eventually into peat and there are different levels of peat based on the original material which is terrestrial peat, limnic peat or telematic peat and this decomposition will start the process of creating coal through burial and lignite in this in into the rocks as a carbon storage so this biochemical process during anaerobic conditions is vital in terms of creating a thick productive and developed soil. If it's full of organic material, then the soil is classified in terms of its taxonomy as a histosols. And of course, the level of organic material is based on the climate, in terms of the precip, in terms of the temperature, how relief or topography controls soil formation. Relief or Topography is the measurement or the analysis of how steep or gentle the slope is on a particular landscape where the soil is forming. So as the landscape is not flat, we have these range in elevations and gradients and slopes across the entire planet. And this would influence the development of the soil through how fast it can develop in terms of what is transported to and from that location and what can stay in that location for a long time to build the soil. So if you have a steeper gradient, you're going to have a drier soil based on the water movement through the soil, through gravity, and also the surface runoff and overland flow, and you'd have increased rates of erosion, and perhaps you'd have certain effects on weathering, how fast the rock and the material is weathered, and the ability for organic material to stay in one place. If the water is strong enough, it will take the organic material, the nutrients with it, and flow the water downhill away from the soil, creating a less developed and less fertile and thinner soil with poorer water retention and nutrient retention, which would affect the CEC, affect the plant growth, 
and affect the biochemical uh, development of the soil. So the gradient is going to affect it in, uh, based on the gravity and how fast things are moving down slope. So you'd have a change in thickness based on the gradient of the landscape. And this would also look at the if it's facing the sun or facing away from the sun, the temperature, the climate, the altitude, the elevation, the amount of precip, the amount of uh, weathering that would take place, and the ability for the slope itself to go through what's called mass movements, which is through gravity, which is creep, slump, and experience land, landslides and rock. How time affects soil formation. So with the acronym CORPT or CLORPT, either one you use, the acronym which looks at the five main factors that control soil formation, time is a underlying factor which needs to be there. So in terms of the length of time, the period of time, how long does the soil have to form under certain conditions? And if those conditions are consistent, then through time and through the exposure and continued action and process of these factors working on that location to develop the soil, you'll have a greater soil development than if you had less time. And in terms of a period of time, soil is going to take hundreds, if not thousands of years to develop based on location. And obviously soil can vary greatly in depth, in the horizons, in the productivity and nutrient level of the soil and what it creates in terms of the vegetation, the biome and the biotic components that it can control and handle in that soil. So the general formation goes from four stages as you see, from one, two, three, and four. Four is the final thick multi-horizon soil profile that you get in various locations, let's say temperate rainforests, that have a very thick O horizon, A horizon, and established B and C horizon. The R is the bedrock. So the first stage, stage is the rock is exposed bedrock and you have weather and erosion to break down the rock over time through mechanical and chemical weathering and you get the breakup of this material into a basic A horizon, the topsoil, and you have pr mostly rocky material as this base for the soil. Then more time continues, the factors continue and are consistent in terms of the organisms, the time, the climate, the parent material, and, and the relief and topography, and you get the third stage, which is the development of a sea horizon with the parent material being mixed up with a little bit of organic material, the A horizon topsoil being mostly organic material and a mixture of pore spaces and parent material that's been broken down even further, and you have a thin layer of just organic material which would designate plants, vegetation, grasses, trees, shrubs, you name it, or animals and decomposing material, and that will be your O horizon. And finally, you have a fully mature, over a long period of time, soil profile with multi-horizons that are clearly established based on their texture, their characteristics, and their color. And this could be feet, two or three feet deep from the surface down to the bedrock, and you have a fully functioning soil that would hopefully provide a biome and ecosystem for a long time based on how long this tectonic area stays consistent. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you'd like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.